Hey YouTube, John Crisp here. Today I'm doing a video about the 33% scale from full size RC triplane that I made out of foam board, yard sticks, foam insulation, a little bit of metal and plywood. And I painted it inspired by my three quarter scale triplane that I fly that's based out in Fulton County. And you can see the ultimate selfie back here of me flying that. Um, but people were asking me to do video of, of the build. So that's what this is. Instead of me being on camera and doing this, I'll show you all the build pictures that I took and I'll narrate through that since you don't want to see my ugly mug. And we'll go ahead and get started doing that. we'll get started so you can see in the upper right those are the original drawings that I took and did uh, measurements on and here I'm transferring everything to foam board I used a combination of white board that I got at uh, office max I believe and then the flight test waterproof foam board this is before the white maker foam came around nice thing about it is I was able to make the fuselage out of one continuous sheet I believe this comes in 60 inch lengths um, so that's what I did here and you can see I've mirrored the two halves and then here I've got a, a rudder just to kind of give me an idea of the size of what I'm going up against. Here are some internal formers and then starting to put some of the internal structure together here. And you can see starting to put some formers together in here starting to build up the front structure and then here's uh, AS3X pits and a couple of cans of paint for scale. Here it is up in the living room, just doing some tests. Uh, again, a little more structure. You can see some internals where I reinforced the rear uh, portion of the fuselage, but did some cutouts there to save weight. That was my buddy Doug standing there for scale. Here I'm starting to work on the wing prototype, just kind of building a cross section of how the internal structure is going to go. And you can see I used some um, basically pink foam, yard stick, foam board, and that's true on all the wings, although I did make some pockets where they plug in. Here's starting to get the bottom wing fabricated and doing some test fits. Here's the horizontal now attached. Uh, here's the power plant finally came in. I'll get more to the motor in a minute. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this slide because what you see here is the main spar of the bottom wing and test fitting it into the fuselage. So it's doubled up with plywood and aluminum U-channel that extends pretty far into the spar area of the bottom wing. So it's a combination of yardsticks, U-channel aluminum, using nylon bolts here to reinforce it, and then already starting to put in some um, plywood reinforcements along the fuselage here, which the whole front edge from this spar forward is reinforced with uh, plywood sheeting. And some of this is for T-nuts, some of this is for strength, and you know, you'll see more of that internal structure. Again, I got a couple of additional pictures coming up here where we're uh, just standing by it to kind of get an idea of the size. You can see it's starting to become pretty massive. There's my buddy Doug again. Here, starting to work on some landing gear sketches for size and uh, get into some detail here. I make these out of wood, similar to the original. They weren't wood, they were metal, but they had a slot where the axle can ride up and down uh, held by bungees. These dowel rods that you see in there hold the bungees. They don't take a whole lot of force. Um, here we are with the speed controller and motor again. Uh, back to some landing gear pictures here. Starting to get that figured out. Uh, use some aluminum aerodynamic tubing for lift struts. Uh, here you can see some plywood reinforcing up in the front. Uh, starting to move back to the tail area here. The tail skid is actually spring loaded. Uh, this is a cowl for test fit for size. Here we go with bungees. These are kind of a little bit out of sequence here, but starting on the uh, middle wing here, that's the center section of the middle wing. All the outer panels on all the wings are removable. That's to get it out of the basement and um, into my vehicle. So I have a truck. And then here you can see the lift strut starting to go in, reinforced with wood on the bottoms. Uh, back to the middle wing here. Uh, got the landing gear on here as a test fit. Now it's actually sitting on the gear here. Uh, got the tail figured out. I can adjust the incidence on the horizontal stabilizer. We got some horizontal shots coming here with my dog checking it out. She's an 11 pound chorky for size comparison. 
Uh, I will have to adjust the incidence on the horizontal stabilizer. It needs uh, the rear edge to come up a little bit, which I can do very easily just by removing that screw and shimming it. Here we're getting the motor system set up and tested, starting to work on the cowling. Again, this is uh, just three sheets of foam with foam board in the front, and then I sculpted it all down. You'll see some pictures of it as it goes through here. Uh, doing a test fit to the firewall, or what will become the firewall, I use some um, rear earth magnets. This is the motor mount starting to come together. Those are all the pieces, and you can see I used, I think this is um, a little thicker than 3 8 but not quite half inch. I don't remember the exact dimensions. I think it's actually metric <laughs> plywood, but um, you can see. And it's got down thrust and right thrust in. Uh, you can see it all coming together here. And I could slide it in and out, uh, and then I did permanently glue it in. You can see why I reinforced that foam board with plywood, because it kind of crushed under the stress of the bolts. Here's the motor starting to go on. I'm going to talk about the motor for a second. <clears throat> the motor is bigger than it needs by a lot, and I did that on purpose. I wanted the weight. Triplanes tend to be um, tail heavy. With such a short nose, it becomes a challenge. So I put all the weight up in the front. The batteries ended up actually behind the firewall. This was just kind of initial test fit here. Um, so I, I also wanted to swing a, a bigger propeller. This is a 32-inch uh, propeller, and I wanted that bigger propeller on, uh, basically to make it a little bit more scale. And again, just starting to build the brackets here for the speed control and everything. We're going to do a motor run here now. All right, guys, this is uh, the motor test, and this thing is a beast. And we're hooked up to two batteries right now, but uh, so we're 44 volt spin test. Go ahead, Doug. <laughs> More? Yeah. So you can see in the motor run video that it's got quite a bit of torque. It's a lot less now with a prop on it and the mass of the airplane behind it. But I'm running it on uh, two five cell packs, uh, each are 5,000 milliamp for a total of 10S setup. And that's given me the first flight after the maiden was about five minutes. And uh, you probably noticed that it wasn't fully painted when I did the Maiden, but with all those checkerboards, <laughs> I wanted to make sure it was going to fly and that I didn't have to do any major modifications before I, f before I finished the paint. And you'll see as we get into the video that the paint has come a long way. It's basically done. I just got a few decals to put on it at that point. So here you can see all the wing ribs for the middle and top wing, and we're starting to get all that put together. You can see a little bit of the internal structure here with some of the yardsticks. Those spars run all the way out, uh, which are, you know, the yardsticks are spars and shear webs. And then you can see here starting to do a little bit of a dry fit with some of the pieces here. Um, you can, you know, basically get an idea of the scale here with my dog. Those are uh, wheels from Williams Brothers, third scale vintage wheels that you saw on there. And... Everything coming together here before the top skin. You can see the wings are a little bit droopy, but again, going back to that metal spar, that basically carries the truss across through all the cabane struts and the outer um, cabane struts, which are not shown on here, uh, the inner plane struts, I think they call them. Again, here you can see kind of a dry fit. This is still the metal cowling. Uh, here we're getting into where I've got the aluminum. Those are half-inch aluminum tubes that I flattened out that'll bolt on here, and yeah, there'll be washers on the final uh, this is a slot for rear spar. I ended up reinforcing uh, the top wing with a rear spar, so there's actually a dual spar system there you can see. Um, again, just kind of, these are top wings. I can tell from how long those spars are. Here we got the uh, fiber tape hinge on the aileron, and just, uh, again, just checking everything here for fit and finish and making sure that this is all going to come together. And I got both panels there now for the ailerons. Uh, here are the wing tips. So this is my little test jig that I built starting to do a dry fit of these foam insulation wing tips. These got sanded down eventually on the belt sander. I think I've got pictures of that. Uh, back to the lift struts on the horizontal stabilizer and the elevator. I've got a wooden dowel and then I reinforced that with a piece of uh, wire basically. I think it was coat hanger wire that I used. 
and just getting all that fit. So here's a dumb idea. <laughs> I started putting all this um, masking tape on here, thinking it would look like finished tapes on the airplane, and it does. But it was a lot of extra time and energy for what visually you can't really tell. Uh, here we've got the tail skid in there, you can see that. So don't do the masking tape is the long and short of it. Again, I had to do a little bit of reworking on the uh, the landing gear there to make it look a little bit better. Here's the cowling again starting to come together. I ended up enlarging these cooling holes. Uh, here I haven't cut down the side profile yet. Uh, put some dowel pins. So this thing goes on in these uh, yardstick holes uh, for basically it slides through there. That makes sure it's aligned properly. And then I've got, like I said, some rare earth magnets. Here starting to build out some of the fairing work around the middle wing and you can see the two bolts that hold that down did a fillet on the back edge of the trailing edge here um, here's an fpv system that i want to eventually use i got a couple of different cameras to test uh, starting to do the battery installation here this is an adjustable tray that can slide fore and aft for cg purposes and then i'll velcro strap these in for flight uh, the cockpit opening here i'll get a pilot in here eventually uh, here are the interplane struts. I ended up jettisoning those. I tried to get a little too cute with uh, yardsticks and foam board. I ended up making those just straight plywood, quarter inch plywood, ultimately. Here's an alignment pin for the wing panels that slide in. Here's a little bit more of a better view of that internal wood structure there for that strut. Starting to put some uh, cross brace wires in here now for the cabanes and the landing gear. Triplane only had struts in those two areas on the landing gear and in the uh, cabane struts. You can see starting to work on guns, now getting the side fairings going here. I didn't carry these all the way around just for really ease of assembly to get to these landing gear. Um, so that's basically what I did there. It's good enough as far as I'm concerned. I didn't get too out of control. These are pins that I can remove for the rear uh, portion of the bottom wing so that they don't flop and twist. Here's gun barrels and wing tips starting to come together. Uh, testing the cowl to cut it down to the proper shape. Starting to put some bottom skinning here on the fuselage and testing that. That's an exit air hole and uh, inner air hole for the electronics. I ended up opening this up as well because it got pretty hot in there after the first flight. Test fitting to make sure the cowling is all good with the prop here. We're starting to get some paint on the cowling. I'm starting to get paint on the fuselage. And checkerboards, all freehand, by the way. I don't mask off my checkerboards. Um, here it is. This is after a few hours of painting. Starting to get that going. Uh, these are the checkerboards on the bottom wing here. Here's a picture that you guys have seen with me posing after a dry fit. Starting to take it apart again here. Now here we're starting to get into finished paint on the wings. So the middle wing is all black. The bottom wing is checkerboard on the top with iron crosses on the bottom, all black, basically on the undersides. Here are my guns starting to get painted. I didn't do the lightning holes that the gun barrels would have, but oh well, they're close enough. Uh, here they are kind of fit in. I did put a sound system on those guns, by the way, and I will do engine sounds as well. Here's more checkerboard and iron cross work on the top wing. That's first coat of black. And uh, here's the sound system starting to get installed. And then the finish coat on the top wing. So that concludes the build video. Um, basically the next picture is my buddy Doug and I out for the maiden before I finished all the paint. And I've got another link to a video of that, so I'm not going to show it here just for the interest of time. But basically it was a fun project. Um, I lost my dad last year. And that was really kind of the start of the inspiration for this project. I'd been wanting to do it anyway, and he and I had talked about it. Uh, he helped me build my other triplane. He built airplanes for a living. Uh, worked on some pretty advanced projects, and um, won't go into detail about that in his life. But uh, I wanted to do it as kind of a therapy project, and certainly um, enjoyed that part of it. It was fun to build. I want to give a shout out to the flight test community as well, because really the foam board idea behind a plane build came from them. I had never really thought about using foam board prior to flight tests coming around. And uh, some of the bigger crazy projects that they've done, I'm like, yeah, I can do a large project like this. And really 
enjoyed the hell out of it, really. It was just a fun, fun project. It, I did all the engineering myself. All I really used to do all this was uh, the original drawings that I printed out and just dimensioned them all uh, to 33% and started cutting foam. So I just made it all up in my head. I, it wasn't a kid. It wasn't plans. I do have a few CAD drawings that I did just to work out, you know, angles and uh, size and things like that, but no no kit of this will be forthcoming by any means. Uh, I'll fly it a few times. I certainly want to fly it again. I, like I said, I want to shim that horizontal stabilizer because uh, it was wanting to, as it got faster, it kept wanting to tuck the nose down a little bit. And what I attribute this to, because I built it very scale dimensionally, I normally would add a little bit larger tail surfaces or uh, do a few things, lengthen the fuselage uh, to get a little bit more stability. I've built quite a few RC triplanes and flown them over the years. And I didn't cheat on this one. And what I attribute it to is the original had an under camber airfoil, which is a higher lift design than the standard Clark Y design that I used for this one. And so I think that's the difference. I didn't put as much uh, lift into the airfoil design and therefore I should have uh, lessened the incidence on the horizontal stabilizer, but easy fix. Anticipated I might need to do that anyway, and hence I designed it where that could be done pretty, uh, pretty easily. A little bit of cooling issues that I want to clear up in the front there. The triplane is notoriously hard to get airflow down through that firewall and cool off the electronics. So that's the next really kind of test flight project that we'll see, and I'll keep posting videos of the flights. Uh, it's a little bit of a long video, so I appreciate you if you've gotten this far in there that uh, you stuck around to take a look. And uh, I'll keep posting videos, so thanks for watching. So I've talked long enough, but here we are for the Maiden. And it turned out to be a nice, beautiful day up here. We've actually had snow since this, uh, but it was in the 70s. Um, but we had basically, I've got a great flying field at a local park not too far from here. Wide open, you can see there's nobody around, which was really nice. Um, and I fly there quite a bit. But we took it out. This was right before the first flight, and it was very successful. Like I said, I'll mention that. But I uh, just wanted to shout out to Doug here, my buddy Doug, Doug Bay. Uh, a lot of inspiration. You know, I did a lot of the design, but it's always better when you've got somebody there you can bounce ideas off of. And he's been able to be a big part of this project, so kudos to him. Uh, he gets more nervous than I do when we go fly. Uh, whether it's my triplane that we go out to the airport to fly or my RC stuff, but um, that's because he doesn't want it to crash. <laughs> you can always build another one. Anyway, it was a fun project. Thanks for watching.